So if you've been coding with cursor or any type of LLM for a while, one thing that you might have noticed is that it often pulls in bad code examples, right? It'll pull in outdated code examples, deprecated code examples, and no matter what model you're using, you're going to run into this issue. So I want to introduce you to a really good MCP server called Context7, which basically allows your agents to automatically go and look up the latest documentation for the actual versions of the um, code libraries that you're using in your code base. So let's just kind of give a demo real quick. If you want to go and install this, they have a bunch of different guides. I have cursor, so basically I just installed it here. I clicked add the cursor, it automatically gets added. And then the verify that it is set up correctly, go to your cursor settings. And then go to tools and integrations and you'll see context seven will pop up over here with two different tools. You have a resolve a library ID, and that's going to kind of look at your project and try to figure out what is the name of the library that you're trying to get the latest docs for. And then Git library docs is going to go and look up all the documentation. So how it kind of works, if you go to context7.com, they have all of the library documentation here. And let's go down and click Drizzle ORM. Now there are a lot of different Drizzle ORMs. I'm not really sure which one's the correct one. That could be problematic in the future, but basically what it's going to do is when Context7 determines that it needs to fetch the Drizzle docs, it's going to fetch this. And it's just a bunch of tokens that describe how you can do joins and queries and set up your data structures and your schema using Drizzle ORM. And then it's going to use that latest up-to-date docs when it suggests code for you. So let's start with an example of why this is important, right? So something very simple, I have a to-dos table. And regardless of not, if you know Drizzle, this doesn't matter. Like I'm still going to demo how LLMs can bring in some old deprecated code. So I'm going to go and paste in a question. I'm going to say, how do I add an index to my to-dos table? And I already know that there's a way to do it on line 23. So I'm just going to copy and paste line 23. Um, do it on line 23 when I define the table. Now again, I am kind of like setting up the scenario just to kind of demo when the LLM can potentially give you bad code. So hopefully it will inject some bad deprecated code and I can kind of show you how use context seven can help improve the docs. All right, so you can see it kind of like went through the code base and it added some stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and click accept. And then if you look at the code, you'll notice that this method, if you hover over it, we are using a deprecated approach. So the LLM literally brought in bad old code, which isn't really used anymore for the latest version of Drizzle ORM that I'm using. And since I do know the docs, the reason is because they don't really accept this object type of definition for your indexes. There's now another approach that you use with arrays. Okay, so let's actually revert this code real quick and then we're gonna try it again with context seven. So I'm gonna go here, I'll just revert this code. I'm going to re-grab this whole thing. I'm going to make a new prompt, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. Now, the difference, if you want to actually have your chat panel, the agent mode, hook into that MCP server, I can say use context seven, right? So there's kind of like a keyword you have to kind of apply so that the agent knows to reach into the MCP server to get this type of uh, functionality. But what you'll notice is that it's going to try to call a method called resolve library ID. So it looks like your prompt and it tries to figure out what library that you're using in your code base that can help solve this, right? So in this case, it's finding the Drizzle ORM library, which I do have installed over here. So it basically kind of like looked at my package JSON and determined this is the one I should probably go look up. So let's click run tool. And then you'll see that it runs a second command, right? So it's going to basically get some information about Drizzle here. Um, and then it's going to say get library docs. So now it's going to actually try to fetch the Drizzle ORM docs from this ID. So if you wanted to go and cross reference where that's coming from, you can go back over here and then make sure that you type in this library. Okay, and it looks like this one right here, two hours ago, it's grabbing in the latest snippet, which is almost half a million tokens. So hopefully the context is large enough to even handle half a million tokens. I highly doubt it, but maybe there's a way that it vectorizes and only search for certain things. I'm not really sure. I don't really dive into the nitty gritty details of how it all works, but let's just go ahead and click run tool. And that's going to bring in the documentation and put it in the prompt so it can get a better representation of the Drizzle documentation. And then you'll notice that eventually it's going to implement those changes using the proper accepted way, right? The latest up-to-date way, which is using this array, okay? Which is pretty great, right? Obviously, when you're trying to bring in a new library or try something new on your code base, you want to make sure that you're getting the latest up-to-date information. And I would say that using the context seven MCP could probably be a good way to do it. Now I do know cursor has a built in way to bring in documentation. Like you can go here and you can actually add docs to this. So I would ask 
Does anyone know if this basically is equivalent to the cursor docs? Like is Context 7 the same approach to cursor docs or is it better? I'm not really sure. I did ask Google and Google said that Context 7 can provide better up-to-date docs. But again, this is an MCP server, which allows you to basically use this on any type of client that can hook into an MCP server. So if you're using like the Claude desktop app or like OpenAI, ChatGPT, whatever else, you should be able to hook into this. And then when you're starting to chat with ChatGPT, you can have that reach out and get the latest information. So you're not wasting time trying out bad or deprecated documentation. All right, that's all I want to show you in this video. Hopefully, if you haven't heard of this already and you don't know what an MCP server is or Context 7, maybe install it, playing around with it will help you get better results when you're trying to use agent mode in whatever IDE of choice that you like to use. Have a good day and happy coding.